call thee home. When truth becomes entangled with treachery and hope succumbs to despair, a scholar's journey turns into a villain's descent. This is the tale of Elias, once a member of the Horadrim, whose thirst for knowledge and twisted ideals led him down a path of destruction and chaos. But who was Elias, really? A traitor to humanity, or a misunderstood visionary on a relentless pursuit of knowledge and power? As we delve into this chronicle of Elias' rise and fall, we must grapple with these questions, seeing the world through his eyes, and deciding for ourselves if his intentions justified his actions. Let's get started. Spoiler warning, I'm about to spoil the entire Diablo 4 campaign. You've been warned. Elias was originally a mage hailing from the desert lands of Anarok. Gifted and driven, his potential was recognized by Lorath Nar, a leading figure of the Haradrim, an ancient order of wizards and mages dedicated to safeguarding sanctuary from the prime evils, Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. Lorath, captivated by Elias' hunger for knowledge, decided to recruit him into the Haradrim. Years after the defeat of Malthel, the antagonist in Diablo III, Reaper of Souls, Elias, along with Lorath and Donan, took responsibility for the Haradric Vault, a significant treasure trove of the Haradrim, filled with secrets and wisdom. The Brotherhood, formed under the guidance of the Archangel Tyriel, adheres to a simple yet powerful principle, to uphold justice and light. However, the tranquility does not last long. Tyriel, sensing a looming threat, left the Haradrim under Lorath's stewardship and embarked on a secretive mission. In his absence, Donan managed to seal Astaroth, one of Mephisto's lieutenants, inside a soul stone. Donan, assuming the role of a guard, left to establish his residence above the demon's prison. Meanwhile, Elias was not idle. Under Lorath's tutelage, he delved deeper into Haradric lore. He stumbled upon a chilling revelation. The obliteration of the Black Soul Stone, an event that took place during Diablo III Reaper of Souls, signals the imminent return of the Prime Evils. This realization filled him with a gnawing dread. For the uninitiated, the Black Soul Stone is a formidable artifact created by Zoltan Kuhn, a rogue Haradrim. This unique Soul Stone was engineered to trap the souls of multiple beings, including both angel and demons. The stone's fate takes a dreadful turn when Malthael, the Archangel, repurposes it into a deadly weapon against humanity. Malthael alters the stone to absorb demonic essence from all living beings within a plane of existence. His plan reaches its climax as he shatters the Black Soul Stone, embedding its fragments into his body and inheriting the power of the primevals. Upon his defeat, Malthael's body dissipated, liberating Diablo. The essence of the other evils remained within Diablo but eventually separated, marking the return of the individual prime evils. In the aftermath, the nations are caught in the throes of recovery, grappling with the massive loss from Malthael's onslaught. This left Sanctuary vulnerable to an assault from Hell, an invasion that Elias feared was inevitable. This is the initial spark that will eventually set Elias on his perilous path fueled by the need to prepare for the impending invasion of the prime evils. The growing apprehension of Elias led him into further research. He unearthed a significant clue in the form of two monumental figures from the history of Sanctuary. Rathma, the first Nephilim and the progenitor of necromancy, and Lilith, his mother, the daughter of Mephisto, who along with Inarius, crafted sanctuary. The moment Elias heard Rathma's prophecy, it poisoned him. He became obsessed with it. Prophecies are riddles. Not even the very wise can be sure of their meaning. But Elias believed he could solve it. And when I told him to wait, he called me a fool. Said we had to do whatever. 
Elias became fixated on a prophecy from Rathma that speaks of a spear of light piercing the heart of hatred. His interpretation of the prophecy is unique. He perceives Lilith as the metaphorical spear of light destined to pierce the heart of hatred and rescue Sanctuary. As Elias delved deeper into forbidden magic and taboo subjects, he carried his findings to Lorath, firm in his belief that no price was too high to protect humanity, even if it necessitated allying with a demon. Elias had been willing to venture into the darkest corners of knowledge, believing that only such drastic measures could hold the key to defending Sanctuary. However, Lorath had rejected his approach, adamant that there were limits that they must never cross. Elias' frustration had mounted as he believed Lorath was failing to do whatever it took to protect Sanctuary. Eventually, Lorath had issued an ultimatum leaving Elias with no choice but to part ways with the Haradrim. However, he had not left empty-handed. Before departing, Elias gathered the last pieces of information he needed to locate the Temple of Rathma. Elias had embarked on a new journey, departing from the protective mantle of the Haradrim, fueled by a conviction that the Temple of Rathma held the power needed to combat the impending onslaught of Hell. He was resolved to solve the prophecy, hoping that his daring interpretation could have become sanctuary salvation. The journey of Elias took him to the Temple of Rathma, a treasure trove of ancient wisdom and knowledge. His exploration of the temple's records and chronicles brought him to an intriguing realization. Every tome, every scroll, Every book in this temple produces the same answer. The only being willing to stand against the eternal conflict, against the prime evils, was Lilith. Throughout all of history, Lilith alone dared to defy the prime evils and the eternal conflict. This understanding had shifted Elias's perspective on Lilith, he no longer saw her as an adversary, but a necessary ally in humanity's battle against the forces of heaven and hell. He perceived her actions as a daring effort to fortify humanity and protect Sanctuary, his homeland. Elias was acutely aware that summoning Lilith would usher in monumental changes in the world. Despite knowing that Lilith was sealed away for opposing the perceived natural order, he remained committed to facilitating her return. However, Elias maintained a pragmatic outlook. Recognizing the uncertain consequences of Lilith's return, he resolved to ensure his survival at all cost. In his exploration of Rathma's teaching, Elias uncovered a ritual to attain immortality by severing a piece of himself, specifically the tip of his finger, and conducting a unique incantation Elias could reform himself after death. With this newfound ability of immortality, Elias created a safety net for himself. He carefully stored his detached finger in a secure spot within the temple, creating a contingency plan to revive himself if Lilith's return resulted in catastrophe. With this safeguard in place, Elias embarked on his next mission to summon Lilith to Sanctuary, but the knowledge of such a ritual was not easy to find so Elias went to the only entity in Sanctuary with all the answers, the Tree of Whispers. Nestled in the swamps of Sanctuary, the Tree of Whispers possesses vast knowledge which it offers in exchange for the head of the questioner upon their death. Given his newfound immortality, Elias was uniquely positioned to bypass this grisly payment. With this loophole in mind, he approached the tree and asked it how he could summon Lilith back from the void to Sanctuary. His question was answered, and the Tree of Whispers, unaware of Elias' immortality, expected the traditional payment. But Elias, knowing he could not die, circumvented the tree's customary toll. He became the first person to receive knowledge from the tree without fulfilling its fatal price. For now. Armed with the knowledge he needed, 
Elias left the tree behind and moved forward to the next phase of his grand plan. His interaction with the tree signified a pivotal moment where he used his wits and cunning to gain an advantage. Elias was now ready to summon the daughter of Mephisto back to Sanctuary. Having acquired the necessary knowledge and equipped with a failsafe in the form of his own immortality, Elias was prepared to summon Lilith back to Sanctuary. Resolute in his decision to ally himself with her, he ventured to Hawazar to an ancient chapel, the access point to the Void. In his attempt to conduct the ritual, Elias required assistance. He cleverly disguised himself and manipulated three unsuspecting souls. Fionn, a thief hailing from Skosglen, Gelwa, a barbarian from the Dry Steppes, and Simon, a scholar residing in Hawazar. This group, initially drawn by the allure of gold and knowledge, became unwitting pawns in Elias' grand plan. As they delved deeper in the underground chamber, Elias deliberately put himself in harm's way, allowing himself to be pursued and seemingly killed by ghouls. This tactic served to deflect suspicion and continue his deception. In the course of their exploration, Simon discovered an old summoning formula, the very piece Elias needed to complete his ritual. Suddenly, Elias revealed himself, not dead as presumed, but very much alive. He abruptly killed Fionn and Galwa, effectively beginning the summoning ritual. Then he persuaded Simon to surrender to his thirst for knowledge and encouraged him to recite the ancient incantation. Seduced by the promise of knowledge, Simon helped Elias in bringing forth Lilith to Sanctuary. The ritual culminated in a bloody spectacle, marking the successful return of Lilith to Sanctuary. Despite the chaos and bloodshed, Elias remained calm, understanding that these sacrifices were a part of his broader plan to protect Sanctuary. His actions had set a new, unpredictable course for the world, and the next phase of his plan was ready to begin. Elias and Lilith quickly formed a formidable partnership. Elias, ever the diligent agent, had borne witness to Lilith's power as she swayed an entire church congregation in Nevesk. Following this, Lilith commanded him to journey to the Dry Steps, a region bereft of protection from the Cathedral of Light or Druids, to complete the remaining preparations for their grand plan. Her ambition extended beyond the mere protection of Sanctuary. She aimed to reach Hell itself, specifically the Cathedral of Hatred, where her father, Mephisto, was recuperating post the events of Diablo III Reaper of Souls. She planned to exploit Mephisto's weakened state to absorb his powers, subsequently annihilating the prime evils and the angels of the high heavens. The achievement of this audacious goal could bring a definitive end to the eternal conflict. The execution of this intricate plan required several key components. An army capable of opposing the Cathedral of Light, which would undoubtedly seek to thwart her, the alliance of a lesser evil to help her cause, the key to the gates of hell, and safe passage through the hellfires of the Cathedral of Hatred. Lilith took responsibility for obtaining the key to hell and securing a safe route across the hellfires of the Cathedral of Hatred. Meanwhile, Elias had been entrusted with the tasks of amassing an army and summoning the lesser evil and Dariel to Sanctuary. Elias ventured to the Dry Steps, a region where vulnerability ran rampant, with no forces such as the Cathedral of Light or Druids to provide security. The Dry Steps presented fertile grounds for Elias's endeavors. His mission to create a powerful army and bring in Dariel into their fold was set in motion. In his journey to form an army, Elias understood the importance of finding individuals within Sanctuary who shared his vision. He realized the people needed a figurehead, someone they could rally behind. At this time, Inaris had escaped Hell and was spreading his prophecy of driving a spear of light into Hatred's heart, ultimately leading to his ascension to Heaven once more. He was also working on rebuilding his Cathedral of Light. Elias, however, 
knew of Inaris' self-serving nature and decided to revive the Triune, the cult that had once revered Lilith and the Prime Evils. His message was persuasive, as he propagated the belief that Lilith, the mother of Sanctuary, had returned to save humanity and elevate them above both angels and demons, which was her initial plan. This doctrine saw the Triune grow rapidly. Unbeknownst to Elias, Mephisto, who was still recovering in the realm of hatred but had a fraction of his power manifested as a wolf in Sanctuary, was subtly shifting the loyalty of the cult toward him. Elias worked diligently to sway as many people as he could to join the Triune and support Lilith. Today, Master Elias called at my door. I had trouble with my words, so I showed him my carvings. He said he could see my pain in them. The pain of a lonely man who had learned to hate the world. And yet, our mother, Lilith, found me beautiful. He said there are others like me as well. And together, we will build the new world. He targeted individuals like Genbar, those who harbored resentment convincing them to join the Triune. In addition to recruiting these members, Elias educated them on how to summon demons, gradually assembling the army they would need for the impending conflict. This marked the reformation and rise of the Triune, swaying under Elias' influence and Mephisto's covert manipulations. In the dry steps, Elias journeyed to the Orbe Monastery. There he met with the abbot, a leading figure in the Zekarim Order. He introduced himself as a Horadrim in order to convince the abbot for a private audience to secure the abbot's trust. Once assured of their isolation, he revealed to the abbot the impending destruction of Sanctuary at the hands of the Primevals, convincing him to impart the knowledge of summoning a lesser evil to Sanctuary. This knowledge was hidden amongst the Zakarum archive. The monastery, tasked with its protection, held a collection of forbidden knowledge that piqued Elias' interest. Inside, he seized all the information he required for his grim plan. This step would intensify the already rampant chaos and violence to a whole new level. The abbot, realizing Elias' treachery, could only bear witness to the massacre of his scholars. Elias summoned demons and annihilated the entire monastery. Beyond acquiring the forbidden knowledge, Elias left behind writings titled Gospel of the Mother. The whole of human knowledge shall be shared among the children of Lilith, and no secret shall be kept from them. And the liars and learned thieves of the world shall perish in their regret. Following the destructive visit to the monastery, Elias turned his attention to the city of Gulran. Upon his arrival in Gulran, the capital of the Dry Steps, Elias boldly strode into the palace. Without invitation or any formal introduction, he demanded control of the city. His audacious demand was met with immediate action by the city's overseers. This ruling class, a line of royal aristocrats known for their cruelty and decadence, responded by casting Elias into their prisons. In the depths of the city's prisons, Elias found himself amongst a clan of bandits led by the monstrous tyrant Brawl. Elias wasted no time and quickly began working his dark influence on Brawl, twisting the already brutal leader and his followers into fanatical, bloodthirsty monsters. Brawl and his clan, now completely corrupted, were then unleashed upon the unsuspecting city by Elias. The ultimate purpose of Elias's grim machinations was to transfigure the city into a place of utter despair, brimming with blood and emotional torment. He aimed to create a fertile ground for his dark ritual, using the chaos and pain caused by Brawl and his clan to fuel the summoning. Deep under the city of Gulran, 
Elias prepared for the blood-soaked ritual, readying himself to call forth Andariel. This was but a piece in the larger puzzle, a necessary step in constructing a formidable army for Lilith, an army capable of resisting both the forces of heaven and hell, protecting Sanctuary from their eternal conflict. As part of his grand plan, Elias chose Tysa as the key to his dark summoning. Tysa, a witch doctor hailing from the swamps of Kejistan, had been serving the Tree of Whisper before Elias ensnared her. With a vengeful intent, she had been sent by the Tree to execute Elias for his previous betrayal. However, Elias and the Triune seized her before she could carry out her mission, twisting her fate to serve their unholy cause. Underneath the capital city, Elias meticulously marked Tysa's skin with countless runes. His design was to use her as a portal, a conduit through which Andariel would be ushered into sanctuary. Within the catacombs beneath the city, Elias and his devout followers began their dark ritual. However, the ritual was abruptly interrupted. The Wanderer and Lorathnar himself infiltrated the Undercity. Their timely intervention threw Elias's carefully laid plans into disarray. Lorath launched a swift attack on Elias, forcing him to abandon the ritual and retreat. With Elias gone, Lorath then quickly moved to free Tysa from her impending fate. Meanwhile, the Wanderer faced Brawl, the monstrous leader of the fanatical clan. A fierce battle ensued, resulting in Brawl's defeat at the hands of the Wanderer. Furious about his failure, Elias retreated to his temple in Kejistan. Following the thwarted ritual, Elias managed to evade the Wanderer and Lorathnar, fleeing to his clandestine temple in Kejistan. This place served as the core of his efforts to construct Lilith's formidable army. Upon his return, Elias was met by Lilith herself, and together they deliberated the next steps of their elaborate plan. Lilith, ever wary of the threat posed by the Prime Evils, was devoted to arming humanity for the impending battle against them. The mother sat with me at the fire and opened my mind to secret knowledge, taught me the true names of all demons through which they can be controlled. Once. We were the lambs, and demons were the wolves. But no more. We, the weak, will be made strong. We, the chosen, will become the wolves. She bolstered Elias's power by sharing with him the names of all the demons of hell, a knowledge that granted him control over the demonic entities for the assembly of Lilith's army. Elias, in turn, assured Lilith that his previous failure was but a minor setback. He pledged to successfully summon Andariel to Sanctuary, thus further strengthening their forces. Elias' sanctuary in Kejistan didn't remain undisturbed for long. The Wanderer, alongside Lorath, had traced him to his hideout. They challenged Elias to a fight, managing to overpower him. Yes, Elias' connection to the Temple of Rathma allowed him a narrow escape from the brink of death, confirming his apparent immortality. During the chaotic confrontation, the Wanderer and Lorath succeeded in stealing a potent artifact, the Sightless Eye. This relic, also known as the Great Eye, holds the power to bridge realms and provide glimpses into the future. The acquisition of the Sightless Eye marked a vital turning point, serving as both a blow to Elias' plan and a potential advantage for those trying to halt the ascendance of Lilith's army. Having seized the Sightless Eye, the Wanderer employed its mystical capabilities to pry into the actions of Lilith and Elias. However, the mystical artifact's vision functioned like a double-edged sword. While it revealed the pair's machinations, it inadvertently exposed the location of the Haradrim, the Wanderer, and critically, Thaisa, whose body was marked with runes from Elias' previous ritual in Gulran. 
Elias would not be able to summon Andaril without Thaisa. Recognizing the opportunity presented, Elias wasted no time. He ventured to the chapel and pulled Thaisa away to complete the interrupted ritual. This time, his efforts bore fruit. Through the marked skin of Thaisa, Elias successfully conjured Andariel, the maiden of anguish herself, one of the lesser evils into sanctuary. But the triumphant return of Andaila was ephemeral. Very shortly after her arrival, she was vanquished by the Wanderer. In the chaos of the conflict, Nirel rescued Taisa. The Haradrim were on their own mission, and with Andaril defeated, they made their way to the tomb of Sankikur to attune a soul stone. Infuriated by Andaril's swift defeat, Elias pursued the Haradrim to Hawazar, a battle-tempered resolve blazing in his eyes. His intent was clear, to quell the persistent interference of the Haradrim once and for all. His final confrontation unfolded within the somber confines of the Black Tomb of Sankakur. There, a revenge-fueled Taisa and the relentless wanderer met him head-on, the encounter leaving Elias weakened and defeated. However, Elias was not shaken by this setback. Bolstered by his apparent immortality, as he smirked defiantly at the Wanderer, an unexpected revelation pierced his confident facade. The Wanderer revealed they had journeyed to the Temple of Rathma, burning Elias' finger and consequently eradicating his immortality. The words sent a cold shiver down Elias' spine. He was now a mortal and his death was no longer a mere inconvenience. The Tree of Whispers would claim his severed head for an eternal display. Shaken by the abrupt shift in his reality, Elias attempted to escape. He traversed the mire of plague marshes, only to be cornered by Lorath, Paisa, and the Wanderer. With his life waning, Elias confronted Lorath for the last time. Oh, Elias. Was all this worth it then? Truly? I brought Lilith to Sanctuary, a thing no one thought possible. And when hell rises to sweep across this world, I should be there beside her, ready to push it back. You left me alone to cross the lines you would dare not to and you have nothing to show for it. You are nothing but a wasted life. Do not look to forgive me, old man, because it is you who brought us here. Was it worth it? That is a coward's question, Lorath. It suits you. And with that, Taisa, wielding the grim finality of vengeance, brought an end to Elias' life. After his death, the Tree of Whispers claimed its due, Elias' head, which it suspended for all of eternity as a reminder of his failed ambitions. And so concludes the tale of Elias a man whose journey into the darkness forever changed the face of Sanctuary. His path, lined with deception, cruelty, and fanaticism, leaves a legacy of bloodshed and chaos. His quest for power and knowledge became a relentless drive that corrupted his spirit and led him to his tragic end. But was Elias wrong in his actions? This is a question each of us must answer. His ideals were born from a place of longing, for power, for knowledge, for an escape from the grip of heaven and hell. He sought to empower humanity, 
even if it meant consorting with demons and defying the cosmic order. Let me know in the comments what you think and let's talk about it. If you like this video, consider giving me a like and a subscription. That would be amazing. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in the next one.